Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I will be discussing a very interesting and influential idea of Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche, he believed that among the many Greek gods, two were the most important. Those are Apollo and Dionysus, who were both sons of Zeus. And this is interesting because Apollo and Dionysus, they are complete opposites of each other. However, according to Nietzsche, true greatness in art but also in life is achieved by uniting both opposites. In his first published book, The Birth of Tragedy, which is this one, and Nietzsche called these two opposing forces Apollonian and Dionysian. In this video, I will discuss why Nietzsche thought that these two gods and the forces which they represent are so important. And I will also discuss the differences between these two concepts and why Nietzsche uh, criticized Socrates so heavily in relation to these two concepts. In a future video, I will also discuss the wider implications of these two concepts and how they influence Nietzsche as well as other thinkers uh, throughout their work. Uh, so if you do not want to miss this other video, then please also consider uh, subscribing to this YouTube channel. So in his first book, The Birth of Tragedy, um, Nietzsche uh, discussed mainly the rise and fall of Greek tragedy as a form of art. Uh, Nietzsche explained why he believed Greek tragedy was so great, uh, why he believed it eventually degraded, but also why he hoped that he could one day produce something of similar splendor. And although art uh, plays an important role in the birth of tragedy, Nietzsche indicated that his discussion in, uh, on Greek tragedy and all the topics related to it represented something much grander, the rise of Greek civilization and Greek art went hand in hand accord, according to Nietzsche and at, at the same time so did the decline of Greek civilization and Greek art. And in order to explain this connection we must first address the two most important concepts of this article which are Apollo uh, represented by the Apollonian spirit and Dionysus represented by the Dionysian spirit. And what is interesting to keep in mind for now as well is that Nietzsche uh, blamed Socrates for the decline of Greek tragedy and therefore also the decline of Greek civilization. And this might come as a surprise after all we've learned about Socrates. However, as you may know as well, uh, Nietzsche he was not afraid to demolish everything which we consider to be holy and not even Socrates. So Nietzsche, he defined Apollo and Dionysus as the two gods of art. And although both are opposites of each other, it is actually through this uh, opposition that they can create something which transcends them both. He wrote, These two very different tendencies walk side by side, usually in violent opposition to one another, inciting one another to ever more powerful births, perpetuating the struggle of the opposition only apparently bridged by the word art, until finally the two seem to be coupled. In order to see how both tendencies oppose each other, um, but can eventually, through their opposition, result in these ever more powerful births, we must first define the differences between both tendencies. In the table on your screen right now, you can see the differences which Nietzsche defined throughout his book, The Birth of Tragedy. And as you can see in this table, the Apollonian spirit represents the more temperate, prudent and rational tendencies. Everything which opposes these tendencies is, however, uh, is considered hostile to the Apollonian spirit. Uh, they are then, however, incorporated in the Dionysian spirit. And, and, and as an extension of these rationalistic tendencies, the Apollonian considers the individual and the perseverance of the individual as the highest good. And it is through these rationalistic uh, tendencies that the boundaries of the individual can best be preserved. And if one were to loosen these rationalistic restrictions, then the individual, as observed by Nietzsche, might become a part of the whole, which is directly opposed to the Apollonian spirit. He wrote, Apollo, as an ethical deity, demands moderation from his followers, and in order to maintain it, self-knowledge. And thus the admonitions, know thyself and nothing to excess, coexist with the aesthetic necessity of beauty, while hubris and excess are considered to be truly hostile spirits of the non apolline realm. The Dionysian spirit differs from the Apollonian in several ways. Uh, Nietzsche observed that the Dionysian spirit 
as opposed to the rationalistic Apollonian spirit, resides in a world characterized in, by myths and rituals. He wrote, the satyr, the Dionysiac chorus, lives in a world granted existence under the religious sanction of myth and ritual. At the same time, Nietzsche believed that when Greek citizens observed a Greek tragedy wherein this Dionysian spirit was presented, a sense of unity would be produced within the observer. And as a result, this Dionysian spirit is characterized by this unity which it produces. So Nietzsche wrote, The Greek man of culture felt himself annulled in the face of the satyr chorus, and the immediate effect of the Dionysian tragedy is that the state and society, the gulfs separating man from man, make way for an overwhelming sense of unity that goes back to the very heart of nature. As a result, Nietzsche claimed that the observer of a genuine Greek tragedy would be left with the confidence that life is filled with joy and that whatever happens at this moment, the wheels of time will continue to move forward regardless. He wrote, Whatever superficial changes may occur, life is at bottom indestructibly powerful and joyful. Living in radically behind all civilization as it were, remaining the same forever, regardless of the changing generations and the path of history. And to those familiar with the works of Carl Jung, which have also made a few videos, you might be able to see a connection between uh, Carl Jung's idea and Nietzsche's. Um, so Carl Jung's idea of the spirit of the times and the spirit of the depths and Nietzsche's idea of the Apollo, Apolline and Dionysian. Um, so since the Dionysian spirit represents excess, the irrational and the form of unity that can be dangerous to societies based on individualism, some ancient Greeks attempted to remove this Dionysian element uh, from art and society as a whole. However, by doing so, Nietzsche argued that these individuals had actually destroyed Greek tragedy. And moreover, this destruction is, was in vain, according to Nietzsche, because the Dionysian spirit is too powerful. He wrote, Can the Dionysiac exist at all? Can it not be forcibly eradicated from the Hellenic soil? Certainly, says the poet, if only such a thing were possible. But the god Dionysus is too powerful. And as I mentioned in the introduction to this uh, video, Nietzsche blamed to, uh, Socrates to a large extent for the downfall of Greek tragedy. Nietzsche argued that Socrates, with a strong focus on knowledge and his emphasis on the rational, strongly opposed the Dionysian spirit. He wrote, The chief law of which is more or less to be beautiful, everything must first be intelligible. A parallel to the Socratic dictum, only the one who knows is virtuous. Nietzsche did not see these characteristics as virtu virtuous, and said he saw them, if they were not by balanced by their Dionysian counterpart, as dangerous and degenerative. He wrote, we may, we may call Socrates the opponent of Dionysus, the new Orpheus, who rose up against Dionysus and put the powerful god to flight. Nietzsche observed that Socrates became the embodiment of the quest for knowledge uh, driven by science. He wrote, Socrates is the archetype of the theoretical optimist who, in his fate, and the explicability of the nature of things attributes the power of a panacea to knowledge and science and sees error as the embodiment of evil. However, science, as Nietzsche indicated as well, has its limits, he wrote. But now, spurred on by its powerful illusion, science is rushing, rushing irresistibly to its limits, where the optimism essential to logic collapses. And this is the case because science can only result in new science and can therefore never really explain anything entirely or result in any form of final uh, satisfaction. So he wrote, If he sees here, to his dismay, how logic twists around itself and finally bites itself in the tail, there dawns a new form of knowledge, tragic knowledge, which needs art as both protection and remedy if we are to bear it. And as a means to compensate for this inherent deficit of science and reason, we must once again call on the Dionysian spirit. Let us turn our eyes to the highest sphere of the world that flows around us. We shall see the insatiable, optimistic zest for knowledge, knowledge exemplified in the figure of Socrates, transformed into tragic resignation and a need for art. While that same zest 
at its lower levels must express itself in terms hostile to art and find the Dionysiac tragedy profoundly repellent. So Nietzsche he blamed, he believed that the Apollonian and Dionysian elements are of equal importance. True greatness in art and life could be achieved by uniting both opposites. And the Apollonian spirit represents individualism, moderation, beauty, rationality and order. And the Dionysian spirit is characterized by unity, joy, horror, myths and rituals, um, as well as chaos. Nietzsche, however, observed that the opposition to the Dionysian element, represented by Socrates, was growing. And according to Nietzsche, this opposition to the spirit of Dionysus resulted in the downfall of Greek, te Greek tragedy. And at the same time, however, Nietzsche believed that this opposition to the Dionysian spirit had other far-reaching consequences. He, he questioned whether could not that very Socratism be a symptom of decline, fatigue, affection, and the anarchical dissolution of the instincts. And these impl implications will be the topic of a future video on the Apollonian and Dionysian spirits. Um, it might be interesting for now to identify how both elements are represented in our own modern world, uh, in particular in art, literature, movies and television. Uh, television. So if you have, you have, have any suggestions, if you've um, encountered both of these elements, then yeah, please let me know in the, in the comments below. Uh, and also if you want to uh, see the next video as well, then please consider uh, subscribing to this YouTube channel. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video as well.